Good morning everyone, this is Arun and welcome to a brand new video series on Apache Hive. In the next few videos, we will try to get a better understanding of Apache Hive. To start off, uh, the first video is going to look at what happens behind the scenes when we issue certain commands in Hive. Okay, I'll assume that uh, you have some knowledge of SQL although it is not necessary, it is really good to have because HQL or Hive query language is very similar to SQL. Um, it's great if you have a basic understanding of Hadoop and HDFS. And if you know uh, basics of Hive, that would be awesome. But don't you worry, I'll provide links to the documentation and free tutorials on Hadoop, HDFS and uh, hive. Okay, these are the, the commands that we're going to take a look at. So create database, create table, load data, drop table, drop database. The files that we're going to use um, is available in the GitHub repo. Hive commands, the HDFS commands that we're going to use, that's also available in the GitHub repo. I also assume that you have Oracle Virtual Box downloaded and installed on your system. If not, you can go to the link Oracle Virtual Box and download the Virtual Box for your um, corresponding operating system. You also need Hortonworks Sandbox. I'm using HDP 2.5, but this should work with um, any Sandbox 2.5 and above. Um, I've given links to DDL operations, data definition language operations in Apache Hive, and DML and SQL operations in Apache Hive. So you can take a look at the documentation. The last link is to a uh, Udemy course. So this is the course, as you can see, it's free um, as of today. And I've gone through this, this is a really good course. So I recommend you, uh, you know, enroll for this course and it's free anyways. So when I first started with Apache Hive and saw these commands, create database, create table, etc., I used to wonder what happens behind the scenes. Does it really create a database? Or does it really create a table like what we see in Oracle SQL or MySQL? I'm sure you may have the same questions. So let's find out what happens behind the scenes in HDFS. So this is what we're gonna do. Download the files from GitHub. Create a database in Hive. Check what happens in HDFS. Create tables. Check what happens in HDFS. Load the data into Hive tables. Check what happens in HDFS. Drop the database, drop the tables, and check what happens in HDFS. Now this, in the first scenario, we are going to take a look at how to load the data into Hive tables from your local file system. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how to load the data from HDFS. When you load data into Hive tables, there are two ways you can do that. One is appending the data and one is overriding the data. The commands are almost similar except for the fact that for the override data, you have this keyword called override so that it overrides the existing data in the Hive table. We'll do the same exercise in using command line and using the Ambari console. I have the sandbox running. I'm going to use putty to log into the HTTP server. So you can use the host as maria underscore dev at 127.0.0.1. Port number is 2222 and your password is maria underscore dev. So let's log in. I'm going to use two command windows. It is easy for me to sh issue commands in Hive and show you what happens in HTFS that way. All right. So first thing that we have to do is get the data file from the GitHub repo. You can do that using this command. Okay, let's get the other one. All right, so we have employees.txt and departments.txt file. Okay, in this window, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into Hive and issue the commands. So let's log into Hive, type in Hive, and enter. We'll just follow along with what we have in this file. So the first thing is creating the database HRMS, right? So let's go 
create the database in Hive. All right, create database HRMS. Okay, now let's go and see what happened in HDFS. You can find Hive related directories in apps, Hive, warehouse. So let's go check that out. Okay, so you can see that it created a new directory called hrms.db. So when you created a database in Hive, behind the scenes, it created a directory called hrms.db. It's a directory, it's not a database. That's a key point to keep in mind. Next, uh, we have to create the tables, but before we do that, we have to use the database that we created. So the command is use hrms. Let's see what we have in the directory. All right, so you can see there is no, no other directories or files within the hrms.db directory. Okay, now let's go ahead and, the, and create the tables and then we'll come back and see what happens. Let's issue the same command in HDFS. Okay, so you can see it created two new directories, departments and employees. So what happened when we create the tables in Hive, behind the scenes it created two directories, departments, employees, each one of them corresponding to table that we created in Hive. Now, let's load the data file. Okay, let's try this command and see what happens. you'll see the keyword called local, and that is what specifies that you have to load the data from the local file system and not from HDFS, okay? The data has been loaded. Now let's check the data. So we have data in the tables. Let's go ahead and see what happened. So we loaded data into employees table. So let's go into employees directory. You can see that it created a new file in the employees directory when we loaded the data. Now this is the same file that we have in the local file system, but now the file has been copied to HDFS. Let's do the same thing for departments. Let's check if we have data. Okay, we have data. Let's see what happens behind the scenes. So this time we are going to go into departments directory. Okay, spelling mistake. All right, so you can see that, you know, the file, the folder has departments.txt file. Now, what happens if you issue the same command again, right? So let's try that. So now the data has been loaded into employees table. What you see here is it just appended the data into the existing table, right? Now let's see what happens behind the scenes when you do this. You see that it created two files, one file employees.txt, this was the first file that we copied over from the local file system into HDFS. When we issued the same command again to load the data into the system, what it did is it copied the same file from the local file system into HDFS, but renamed it to employees underscore copy underscore one dot txt. All right, so we found out what happens when you load the data. We also figured out what happens when you issue the same command again to load the data without overwriting the data. Now, next thing what we are going to do is we're going to do an override, right? So let's issue this command. You can see the keyword overwrite. So let's see what happens. Let's do a select. Now you can see that you know, you don't have the duplicate data, you have only the data from the data file. 
So what happens behind the scenes in HDF is you only have one file, right? This is what we want. So if you're loading data into the table, keep in mind that there are two different ways to load. One is to append the data and one is to override the data into the table. The next is to drop the tables. We'll drop employees and departments table and um, in the end, we're gonna drop the database and see what happens, okay? So let's go ahead and drop the tables, drop employees, drop departments. Okay, it's not drop employees, it is drop table employees. Okay, my bad, I'm gonna correct that. Let's drop departments. So we dropped the tables. Now let's see what happens behind the scenes. Okay, let's go to the HRMS DB directory. You can see that the departments and employees directories has been deleted from the hrms.db directory. So when you delete, when you drop a table in Hive, behind the scenes, Hive deletes the directories from HDFS. Now let's drop the database as well, right? So drop database hrms. We are going to apps Hive warehouse and see what happens to the hrms.db directory. All right, that has been deleted as well. I hope you have a very clear understanding of what happens when you create database, create tables, load the data, drop the tables and drop the database in Hive. Okay, so we're done with the command line. Next, let's do the same operations using Ambari console. It's a little different, but behind the scenes, everything is gonna be the same. To log into Ambari console, open your browser and Navigate to 127.0.0.1, column 8080. Username is maria underscore dev. Password is maria underscore dev. Let's log in. All right, once you are in the home page, let's go to Hive View. Okay. So you can see that on the left side, you'll see all the uh, databases that are already in Hive. We don't have the HRMS DB, so let's go ahead and create the HRMS DB. The command is gonna be the same. Execute. All right, so it seems like it has been created. Let's refresh. You'll see that the new database HRMS has been created. Now let's go behind the scene and see what happened. Okay, let me clear. All right, you'll see that the new directory hrms.db has been created. All right, so the next step is to load the data and it's pretty easy using uh, Bari console. So let's navigate to the upload table tab. We're gonna select the data, departments, employees.txt right and let's do employees select the database as hrms let's change this to text file rename the columns employee underscore id name department underscore id all right so when we issue this command uh, behind the scenes it creates the uh, table and it also loads the data into the table it's gonna take a few seconds, so I'm gonna jump forward in time. The table has been created, let's go to query. Click on HRMS. You'll see that the new database employees, a new, sorry, new table employees has been created with three new columns, employee ID, name, and department ID. So let's see what we have in the table, right? So let's select the default database at SHRMS and then do select star from employees secure once we're done we'll go back and do hdfs and see what happened behind the scenes in hdfs all right you can see that you get the data back from uh, the hive table okay 
and let's go to HDFS and see what happened there. Okay. So we have the hrms.db directory. So let's go into hrms.db. And you can see that created a new directory called employees, which corresponds to the table that we created in Hive. So let's go into that. And you can see it created a file. Let's see what we have in that file. Two, three, four, five, six. Let me just go there. Okay. So it stores uh, the data in a different format than what we have. Uh, if you want to know more about it, I'll leave links to that uh, of the different file formats that Hive uses. Let's do drop table employees. Okay, so it succeeded. Let's go back and see what happened. So, all right, deleted the directory. So this shows you that, you know, behind the scenes, if you use Ambari console or command line, it's gonna do the same thing. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I'm gonna wrap up. I'm gonna leave links to all this, um, the GitHub repo, all the other links for the documentation, the Udemy tutorial also to the Google slide. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to load data from HDFS instead of the local file system. All right, guys, keep learning. Cheers. Talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.